speaker. We want to give him real enough time. Brother Anthony, please welcome him as he comes to speak to us today. Let's speak to the Lord in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, brethren. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. It's um, amazing always, as you always know, and you probably are tired of hearing me say it, but every single time when I prepare a message, I always ask God just so, I guess for my own comfort, you can say it's lack of faith to ask always for a sign, but God always gives a sign. Amen. That very song that Sister Gloria just sang is the main scripture that I want to share with the brethren. Amen. Until then, my eyes behold that city. Amen. Until then, until God calls me home. Amen. Amen. It's, it's amazing when you really think about um, vision and sight. Vision and sight. Until then, my eyes behold that city. Amen. Until then, your eyes behold the city. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 tells us, with no uncertain terms, in verse 9 of Hebrews 11, that the Father of us all had his eyes on where? On the city. Amen. The Father of us all being Abraham. Amen. If we're faithful, the word says, then are we the seed of Abraham. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter if we're black, white, if we're born in Israel, if we're born in England, wherever it is. It says the thing that makes us the children of Abraham is if we are beholding that city. Amen. Amen. The word of God tells us by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise, in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles of Isaac, Jacob, the hairs with him of the same promise. Amen. Amen. For he looked for a city which have foundations, whose builder and maker is no other than God himself. Amen. Amen. If you could just bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. O righteous, everlasting and eternal God, Heavenly Father, we, your people, come before you in prayer. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for the proofs, Lord God, that you show us continually that you love us and that you do not leave us without a word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for gathering us and for giving us the mercies, Lord God, that we may gather in your sanctuary in safety. And that, Heavenly Father, we may have the promise that we may behold the city to come. Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' name that as I speak here, you may cleanse me from all my sins. And that, Heavenly Father, I may not be a hypocrite. Everything that I stand and preach and teach, may, O oh, Heavenly Father, you give me the minds to put it all into practice. May, Heavenly Father, every single one that listens and hears be given the grace to put everything that's said and heard in practice. And that, Lord God, this may not be a service of tradition, that it may be a service of life change, Lord God. Be with us continually, not only for the service, but throughout the course of our life, that, Lord God, we may behold the city and be in the city with the faithful Abraham and with your son, Jesus Christ. All these mercies we pray in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ and as if we pray. Amen. 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 Now, the title of the sermon that I want to speak to us about is, Are We Living by Sight or Vision? Amen. Are we living by sight or vision? And that's quite interesting to actually think about. And it's something that we don't oftentimes really think about. But when we think about seeing, we think it's vision and we think a vision is seeing. We see the two as synonymous. 
However, the word of God, and I guess even the very dictionary itself, tells us that there's a difference between sight and vision. Amen? The word of God here tells us that Abraham, by faith, looked for a city, even though he was in the promised land. Amen? Don't miss that very important point. The word of God here tells us that he sojourned in the land of promise with the seeds and the hairs of the same promise, but he sojourned in that land as it was strange. Amen? Was he walking by sight or was he walking by vision? Is the question. Amen? By his sight, he can look around and see this is the promised land. And bear in mind that is no small promise. At that time, if you can imagine, he had no hair, he had no seed, he had no nothing. And God brought him many victories. And he can turn around at that point and say that he's achieved the promise which God has given him. He can look to his left and right and see that he was in the physical land of promise. However, he wasn't going by his sight. He knew that God had bigger and better plans by his vision. Amen? His vision told him or showed him that though I see this, this isn't it. Amen? He sojourned in the land as if it was nothing to him. As a matter of fact, when you see the story of Abraham, even when he was in the land, it was up and down. He had to leave to Egypt to, for, to escape a famine and so forth. Once he reached the promised land by sight, it wasn't all pretty. Amen? And that goes to show us something about this life. As the word tells us that as we sojourn and pilgrim through this world, and as we sojourn and come out of Egypt, no matter how high we may think we've achieved, greater is on before. Amen? Greater is on before. It's interesting when you look around in the news nowadays and the, the, the situation in Latimer Road. Unfortunately, I've grown accustomed to bad news. Very accustomed. You can, I can watch the news and it... What's the word? What's the saying? It, it slips off me like water for ducks back. It doesn't affect me. However, this Latimer Road incident... For some reason, and not, it's an obvious reason, of course, but it's not like when I hear of these terror incidents and when I hear of these other incidents that you hear of in the news, to see that people was trapped in a burning building. And a matter of fact, the day after when we passed by and saw the building still burning, and then when you think and you can smell the soot, you understand, you, you don't know what it is that you're actually smelling. Do you see what I'm saying? And when you think that, that, when you're looking up at the building, you're seeing a building that's pretty much a cemetery, full of bodies, people with families that went to sleep, and then the next moment they're going to awake is come judgment. Amen? It's very serious when you think about it. And bear in mind, now the nation's very cautious about fire safety and this and that. However, but it can be a total other calamity that would bring a great tragedy upon the nation again. Whether it's a tower falling, whether it's the building collapsing over our very heads, whether it's anything. The moral of the story is, in this world, there's going to be bad situations. Situations that can make you even wonder, if that happens, is there really a God? If, and many people ask that question, they see things that happen, they see the confusion, they see the, the, the disorder and all those things in the world. And by that conclusion, they say, well, this must not, there must not be a God, because how can God allow all this? But the truth is, if we walk by sight, those things would knock us off course. We could be, down, we could be downtrodden and we can have no hope. However, we know as children of God and the message that we have to share the vision with the world is that all these things, no matter what happens, if you die in Christ, it's great gain, amen? Amen. If you die in Christ, it's great gain. And the beautiful thing is a a sister who was in the the building, who I heard on the news, said that the Holy Spirit woke her up. On the news, live, she's saying that it's the Holy Spirit that woke up. She don't know how she woke up, an African lady. 
She don't know how she woke up, but the Holy Spirit woke her up. And there's no credit that she's African, by the way. That was just additional information there. <laughs> no, no, no brownie points for that. But she was an African lady who said that the Holy Spirit woke her up. And people can obviously see that as fanatical. Yeah, but she, it could be just circumstance that she woke up. However, it comes back to our very lesson of this morning. No matter what someone believes, God has his people in all places. Amen. And the angel of the Lord camps around those who fear him. Amen. So if we walk by vision, we have nothing to fear. Amen. No matter if it comes to terror, and I wouldn't even lie, even nowadays, if I have to hop on the train, I get very cautious and I look around and I'm, understand, you're walking by sight and I shouldn't. However, if we're walking by vision, we know that no matter what, the word promises that the Lord wouldn't suffer sudden calamities to come against the righteous. Amen? And I'm not righteous, but I'm righteous through Jesus Christ. Amen? So we can all claim that promise if we're in Christ. Now, bear in mind, godly visions are based off revelations. Amen? Bear in mind, godly visions are based off revelations. And you can also flip that and say, revelations, also as I say, godly visions bring revelations, and godly visions are based off revelations. Amen? That might come clearer as I progress through the sermon, but suffice to say, every vision of God that you see in the scriptures is to bring about a revelation. One instance, Apostle Paul said, lest that he should come puffed up and you know, feel big of himself about all the revelations God's given him, he had a vision of a man who was taken up to the third heaven. And he won't boast about all the revelations and all the knowledge he has through God, but he'll boast about the man who was taken up to heaven and heard unspeakable words. Amen? That's an example of a vision which brought about a revelation. The revelation being, stay humble. Amen? Every single vision that we have, whether it be dreams and to no one else, you can clearly see that God has placed that thing there for you to see and acknowledge. That's a vision. And a dream is obviously when you're sleeping, the Lord can show you things. And the beauty of dreams is that the Holy Spirit somehow speaks to us and our brain, which is meat, if you will, and that chemical reactions of things that we see has some meaning. Amen? That's why dreams need interpretations. You see in the scriptures that God can give you a dream one way, then he'll give you another dream, just like with Joseph. But there's key things that need interpretation to understand. Amen? So if we have dreams, brethren, I, I say that we pray for the gift of interpretations. A lot of times we can have dreams and assume that what we've seen is literal. That's what's going to happen. But if you see the example of the scriptures, dreams need interpretations. Amen? So always pray that there's interpretations or God sends someone with the gift of interpretations. Amen? Now, turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Now, once we have these godly visions and these revelations, which all have a purpose, may I add, every single one has a purpose, the Word of God tells us that there's a purpose and bear in mind, I don't want us to think that we need visions and revelations, meaning that we need God to show you a bird to fall out the sky to say, keep the Sabbath, with the word Sabbath written on the side of the bird. We don't need that. The visions and revelations can and do come from his word as well. Amen? The word of God is God speaking to his people, as I've said numerous times. And when we pray, that's us speaking back to God based upon what he says to us. Amen? So it's important for us to know what God is saying. How can we have a conversation if I'm not listening to what you have to say? And bear in mind, how can I speak to my parent if I don't know what my parent wants or is expecting of me? Amen? So it's important with these visions and revelations that we get through the word, which we get through dreams, which we get through trances, which we get through things that the Lord shows of us, that it says, having therefore these promises, so all these things that's revealed to us, Obviously, the greatest promise of all, the city to come. Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen? So you see that the real purpose of these revelations and dreams and promises 
is for us to have fear and to bring about a change. Amen? The real purpose of godly visions, revelations, dreams, all those things is to show us things that we can bring about a change that, in essence, we don't disqualify ourselves from the greatest vision and the greatest promise to come. Amen? The purpose of visions isn't just for entertainment. And sometimes we think that we have this vision and I say, oh, I had a vision that the pastor is doing this. God forbid. Or that sister so-and-so is doing this. God forbid. Those visions and dreams, as the word of God says, a lot of times is coming from filthy dreamers, as the word says. Unfortunately enough to say it. I'm not throwing stones at anyone. I'm not calling anyone anything. But we have to be careful. The purpose of dreams and visions is to bring about revelations that more times bring about a change in the individual receiving them. Amen? Not only in the individual receiving them, but God will give it to people who have influence to make the message known to people who need to hear the message likewise. Amen? Daniel got the message and he gave it to King Nebuchadnezzar. He got the vision and God gave him the interpretation and the means to have influence to speak to Nebuchadnezzar. Amen? Amen? So God, in essence, isn't a God that does things randomly. God knows exactly what he's doing. Dreams and visions isn't something that we go sleep. And the word of God tells us in Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1, that dreams come by the multitude of business. If you eat too much food before you go sleep, you can have dreams. In essence, it's chemical reactions. Your brain's just descrambling what is heard in the day or through the week. And it's subconscious thoughts that's coming alive. So the multitude of business is bringing about dreams. And we can turn around and wake up and say, God showed me something. But we have to look at what is the message and the the purpose of such dreams and visions. Amen? Amen. However, here we see that having these promises, we're meant to have a response in ourselves. We're meant to cleanse ourselves, not only from sin, but anything that is not like God, whether it be of the flesh and spirit. Amen? Amen, brethren? Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now, Matthew 6, verse 33, very well known to all of us. And bear in mind, it ties in exactly what Abraham, the faithful, was walking by. Abraham looks for a city whose builder and maker is God. Amen. Amen? Amen? Jesus Christ said, no matter what happens in this life, don't worry Don't worry about your money. Don't worry about your job. Don't worry about your circumstances. The one thing, my dear, beloved friends, to worry about is seeking first the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Now, are we walking by sight or by vision? I ask the question again. If we're walking by sight, we're going to worry about those things. We're going to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. How am I going to pay the mortgage? How are the kids going to live? How are we going to graze the... We're going, to have, we're going to be burned down with all these things that we see around us. But Jesus Christ is saying, have the vision of the kingdom of God. Amen. And certain times we forget the fact that these things is tied together. We think of visions when we hear it in the, in the church a lot of times. And we think, okay, my vision is that I'm going to be a CEO of a company. I'm going to have my own business. I'm going to have successful, um, a successful life, whatever that is. Success to me is different to you. But oftentimes it means being rich and wealthy and famous and you're of great status. However, here we see that the main vision that Jesus said for us to have is the vision of the kingdom of God. Amen? Though carnally speaking, it's unlinked. You see that having that vision in mind, it brings about all the other blessings. It brings you money, it brings you riches, it brings you spouses, it brings you houses, it brings you everything that you need. Amen? Now, a lot of times with the visions that we may have, and don't get me wrong, it's very important that we have visions for our individual lives. Visions can be individual. God can give you a vision that he has better things in store for you, that he don't want you to be employed, but he wants you to be an employer. He don't want you to be employed, but he wants you to have your own work. Amen? God can give you these visions. However, those visions fall far short if our vision isn't matching up to the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, a lot of times what tends to happen, if we don't have the vision like Abraham, 
When we come to the sanctuary, we're here for all different types of purposes. Amen? Amen. If my vision is on the kingdom of God, I would have no room to come here and malice Sister Hyacinth. Amen? Amen? If my vision is on the kingdom of God, all other boxes get ticked. Because I do not want anything else to distract me from that vision. Amen. Amen? It's very important when we study this thing or this theme about vision that every single thing is covered by having this one vision of the kingdom of God. Not only our needs, but our attitude and our application to this church life. If my vision is the kingdom of God, no matter what happens to me, whether I'm rich or poor, whether I have a roof over my head or not, I have the promise. Amen. Jesus Christ said when he came, or what was prophesied of him, that the poor would have the gospel preached unto them. The poor didn't, he didn't give the poor money, but he gave them the gospel of the coming kingdom. Amen. If our hope is based upon that vision, nothing can take us away from God. No tribulation, no suffering, no anything can distract us from God's plan for us. Amen. Amen. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 tells us how we're meant to live. Now, if we're walking about this world and we're looking at things, as I said, we're looking at the money, we're looking at all sorts of carnal things, and some of those things is good, but if our focus is on those things, we ain't looking on the eternal. Apostle Paul warned the Corinthians to look at this one thing. He says, in other words, while we fight this warfare, while we're living this life, brethren, we look not at the things which are seen. Amen? Now, that's very difficult to do. Every single thing that we know as human beings come through our five senses. Every single thing that we know, everything that we understand as babies, everything that we understand comes through our five senses. But here we are told... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Where did that come from? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wherever Sister Liz is. I wasn't using my vision. <laughs> my sight, sorry. <laughs> I tripped myself up there. I wasn't using my sight, not my vision. But here we see that, in other words, Apostle Paul is saying, and this is why we have to understand we cannot walk this walk by carnal strength alone. A lot of times we can get frustrated with things we need to overcome and we try work ourselves up or psych ourselves up and try to overcome it. It's impossible. We cannot overcome spiritual problems with carnal efforts. Or we can't look at spiritual things through carnal eyes, through physical eyes, through our five senses. Apostle Paul says we look at the things which are not seen. Amen? For the things which are seen are temporal and that's... Very true. Every single thing that we look around and see is going to die. It has its date with death. Whether it be the atoms around us, whether it be this plastic, whether it be this wood, all things are going to burn. Amen? All things are going to burn. Amen? Jesus Christ said when he comes back, he's going to baptize with fire. Everything is going to burn in this earth. However, the things which are not seen is eternal. So if we're minded about gold, if we're minded about silver, if we're minded about jobs, if we're minded about family, then it's going to burn, ultimately. But the one thing that can't burn, it isn't going to burn, is the kingdom which is in the heavens. Amen? If we have our eyes fixed upon that, nothing can take us off course. Now, interestingly enough, we know the song and we sing it a lot of times, Blessed Assurance. And a lot of us know a lot about the um, author, Fanny Crosby. Fanny J. Crosby, a wonderful woman, amazing woman, who was raised around 100 or so years ago or more in America, New York. And when she was only four months of age, she had a disease, pretty much. And since her family doctor was away, there was a person who acted or faked to be a doctor, impersonated to be a doctor, and gave a prescription, which in other words had mustard 
in it. And in other words, this is the cure, rub it on your eyes and it would make you better. Long story short, that mustard caused her to be permanently blind at the age of four months. So imagine that four months, it's as good as to say that she was blind from death. There's nothing that she would remember or nothing that would be um, of significance to her. However, when we think about the hymns and the lyrics that she's put in those hymns, God must have gave her a vision even though she didn't have no sight. Amen? When she says in blessed assurance, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, and visions of rapture now burst on my sight, angels descending, looking above. Vision. Amen? She couldn't, and a matter of fact, you can call it a blessing or a curse, it's up to how we want to apply it, but was it a blessing or a curse? You decide. She didn't have the problem of walking by sight. Amen? She didn't have the problem. In other words, things could be happening around her and she didn't have a sight to fall upon, but she saw through the word of God the vision of the rapture. And bear in mind, the rapture is obviously a dirty word if you look at it in the, in the use of going to heaven before the tribulation. If you're talking about the rapture in terms of going up to meet Christ in the clouds, as the word says, that's a rapture. Amen. Even though it doesn't appear in the word in the Bible as the word rapture, nor does the word millennium appear in the Bible. However, we know a thousand years is a millennium. Amen. But for her to see this by vision, it must be a revelation through the Spirit of God. Amen. And when you hear of him, songs and spiritual songs, just as Jesus, I mean, well, Jesus Christ correctly gave the word preserved through the ages, these hymns that we sing, God must have inspired these people. And every single one, and in our own time, look at the story of these hymns. A lot of them have gone through great tribulation, great stories, and then you see the power of the hymn that's sung for hundreds of years. God set them up to have a story for the rest of us to follow. Amen? Fanny Crosby didn't have any sight. Now, bear in mind, sight is seeing what we understand to be true. While vision is seeing what God says to us to be true. Amen? Sight is what we understand to be true, but vision is what God tells us to be true. And I'll explain. We can see X, Y, and Z, and we can see armies around us, but when David says in Psalm 27 verse 3 or thereabouts, that it says, though an army encamp round about me, I will not fear. Radio, whether my role, whatever it is, we have to have order in fulfilling that vision. Because interestingly enough, the word of God tells us that even Satan's house has order. Satan's house isn't divided against itself. Amen? So how can we fulfill God's vision if we think that we, we can stay divided or that we can be split or you can have that vision and you get the vision? which means D, two. You get two visions. Amen? So if your vision is to go left and my vision is to go south or to go right, you get D vision. Amen? Regardless of if you're fully convinced that there's danger to the left and I'm convinced that there's danger to the right, if we both go our separate ways or we both ain't speaking the same thing, there's division. The Amen? Division doesn't come necessarily by someone wanting to oppose themselves, but if I don't fall in line or humble myself to the bigger vision, it's a byproduct that division must happen. Amen? 20 souls in a year. Amen? Now, lastly, in terms of this, if you turn to verse 49 to 52, and I'll close on this to keep it within 30 minutes. 32, sorry, for, um, 49, please. 49, I see 42, matter 42. 42 tells us that ultimately, the end of the story with the, the sorcerer or the spirit of opposition which came against them and against the vision was that he was blind for a season. So in other words, the vision of God would take the preeminence 
if we're in unison with God's will. Amen? You see it with Moses and the serpents. The magicians had the ability to deceive or with Pharaoh. There's a battle going on who's more powerful. However, God's power would always come out on top. Amen? If we're obedient. However, we see that the word of God still took his course in that region. Later on now, we see that Paul and Barnabas continued and preached in the synagogues and had great influence. And the, and the Gentiles here besought them that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, in other words, and he's raised from the dead. And it says, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes or people who's been brought over to Judaism, but they're not Jews by blood, followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath, the whole, almost the whole city came to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Stop there for a moment. The response of the people who knew God because they saw the success of these two individuals was to start working in opposition. Amen? Bear in mind, we spoke earlier about a spirit of opposition. But here we see it's slightly different. The cause of this opposition was the flesh of the Jews. In other words, the word of God tells us that the works of the flesh is envy, strife, jealousy, so forth. Amen? There's certain battles that we have, and certain times we can say, the devil made me do it, when it wasn't the devil, it's our own lusts and desires. Amen? Oftentimes, it can be a spirit of opposition that stops a vision from taking course, or tries to stop a vision taking course, or it can be our own flesh. Because I'm not the one doing it, now I'm going to start working against the movement. Amen? Here you see the cause of that, that opposition was because there was envy and that caused strife amongst the Jews. Amen? We have to be very careful as a church and as Christians in general that whenever a move of God is taking place, that we're not affected for the wrong reasons. Amen? And we have to be very careful because sometimes we can justify the wrong reasons or the wrong feelings that we get. And that could be many different ways. It could be, well, pastor didn't call me. He didn't tell me that we're going out to do this. And I would have taken part, but since he didn't, oh, do you know, next time I'm not going to go. Do you understand? At face value, that can seem understandable. You're upset, you didn't get called. However, you're actually working now in opposition to the bigger vision. Amen? We have to be able to humble ourselves, no matter how we're feeling, and see the bigger picture that God has a will for every single one of us and every single one of us buys into God's big vision for the world and for the church amen it's very important that we understand as we seek to bring in 20 souls as pastor said and that's a measurable obje objective 20 souls if the Lord wills if we if the Lord wills and we bring in two and we've done everything that we can to bring in those two God's will be done, amen? But be encouraged, brethren, that with everything that we do, with buying into the vision, any vision that we receive from the Lord, that we buy into the vision for the church and so doing, our reward will be great when the Lord returns, amen? Amen. Be encouraged in my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord for brother. Thanks for him. Amen. Let's worship the Lord for brother Anthony. Let's give the Lord thanks. Praise the Lord. Glory to his name. As we begin to understand, I was many times told that whenever the Lord wants to start something, there is always an opposition. And I'm very much aware of that. And I fully understand in God's word that we must stand like a brave, 
with our face to the foe. I can see that there are many distractions at this time whilst Brother Anthony was trying to speak. Have you noticed the distractions? Some of us was distracted, but nevertheless the word must go forward because there may be oppositions, there may be distractions, but we thank God for Brother Anthony's words today that's come through, the word of God come through Brother Anthony. And as we go forward, we have noticed that down through the years, the Lord has given us plans. But there is one thing that I've noticed in many situations. The plans start and then they don't get finished. But by God's grace, we want to finish our plans. Amen. And we must stand flat-footed for God and pray for Brother Anthony very much indeed. Not just pray for him, but pray for him real good. That the Lord will bless him and his family and will not discourage him as time goes on. And we must also catch the vision and move forward by God's grace because we're living in the last days. We're going to close, but we're going to remember though those souls who lost, those people who lost their lives in Labrook Grove. And we're going to pray that the Lord will help their families to overcome the grief. And it is very painful to know how this thing happened. Somebody said somebody's fridge caught a fire and they left the fridge to burn. By the time 15 minutes had elapsed, the whole building was in flames. We don't know just yet the true story. But what we do know is that we are told that we must still preach the word. We are told that we must still talk about Jesus. We're still to do our jobs. No matter how trouble some time, troublesome times may come, no matter how oppositions may come, we must still carry on. Praise the Lord.